Hello again, this is Tubal Kane. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, Logan lathes. This is a 10 inch swing Logan lathe. These are real nice lathes and they have many similarities to a South Bend but yet a few differences as well. Now the size of any lathe is uh, determined by the swing. So the distance between the center here, if we had a center in there, and uh, the saddle here is about five inches. That means that this is a 10 inch lathe. We double that and the largest piece of work that we could swing in there would be a 10 inch. And then lathes are also sometimes uh, sized by the distance between the centers, the headstock center and the tailstock center, which is often about 24 inches or 30 inches <clears throat> in the smaller sizes. This is a nice machine that uh, very heavily built. It has the V ways like a South Bend, not the flat waves ways like uh, uh, Atlas Craftsman lathe. My dad had one of these when we were kids, and we used to call it the peg leg lathe because the motor and uh, the rear jack shaft assembly is supported by a uh, well a peg leg. On some of them it was a piece of pipe. And uh, behind there we have the motor down here below and uh, there's a jack shaft here and there's a V-belt pulley there that is connecting the two. And then we have a flat belt pulley. Uh, here on the final drive with three speeds. So you got three speeds plus the back gear, which is three times two, so you got six speeds, spindle speeds. This cover here is uh, cast iron, very heavy. You wouldn't want to get your finger slammed in that thing. But as you raise this, it also releases the belt uh, tension. So that's kind of a neat feature. Here, of course, we have the back gears and the bull pin in here which isn't going to show up but when we <clears throat> disconnect the bull pin and then we put the back gears in and that's done on a Logan lathe with this uh, slide here rather than a lever like you see on some machines and this entire assembly here is called the headstock we got the bearings in here and this lathe does not have a quick change gearbox so we've got uh, all the gears here that we would, the gear train, and some of those we'd have to change. And inside of here is the chart telling you how to change the gears. And I do have a cigar box full of change gears. It's no fun to change those, and therefore people really don't change them. You kind of get them at a convenient uh, uh, feed, and you just leave them there because. Even though this is a good lathe to thread on, it's something that is not really done that often. And then uh, this entire assembly here is called the carriage, and it's composed of the apron here on the front, the saddle, which rides on the ways, and we've got the cross feed here, or the cross slide, which is this assembly, and finally the compound rest, and the tool post, and the tool holder, and we could break that down into a few more, but I don't think we will. This is the carriage lock. The threading uh, dial. And then down here, on this particular lathe, the uh, longitudinal feed is uh, operated with the split nut or the half nut lever. And the cross feed, it does have an automatic cross feed, and that is uh, operated by pulling this plunger on and off. This is the lead screw that through all of these gears uh, drives the carriage. Put that in. Drives the carriage. And there's a bearing on this end. This is called the feed change lever and that will reverse the direction of travel 
of the carriage, or actually it reverses the direction of uh, rotation of the lead screw. Got a four jaw chuck on here that is uh, six inches in diameter. On this end we have the tail stock and that's broken down into the dead center here and the quill, the quill lock, the hand wheel, and then there's a lock here that allows you to uh, lock the tail stock in position. If you loosen it, you can slide the tail stock back and forth. A nice little... Okay, the lathe is running. We've got a switch down here, but we don't have a reverse switch. It's just for the forward. I don't really like a reverse switch on a small lathe like this because it's so easy to spin the chuck off and have it drop on the uh, ways. This lathe is in particularly good condition. There's very little damage to the ways, which is very little damage right here on the compound rest, which means this did not spend its life in a school. We normally don't operate this without the uh, guard, but I just wanted to show you how the, the gears run. And this is the lead screw. And when we Throw the half knot lever, we have a carriage uh, feed and it's feeding toward the headstock. And then this button here is the cross feed. If we want to reverse the direction, we would of course use the feed reverse lever. The lathe is now running in back gear, so you can see it's much slower. The back gear is uh, very useful for several reasons. Uh, one is if you're going to do all the threading, you probably want to run it at a slow speed. Or if you're drilling large holes or turning large diameter work, you want it at a slow speed. It also gives you a lot more uh, power. It's like putting a car in low gear. I think Logan lathes uh, did not get the credit that they deserved because they were nice lathes. They were made in Chicago. Hope you enjoyed this little lesson on Logan lathes. This is Jubal Kane saying so long.